Hey everybody, welcome back to episode two. Uh, this episode, what are we going to be talking about? We're going to be talking about how to execute your script. We did that in the previous episode, but there was one kind of like condition, I guess, which is you prefix with this dot slash and then the name of the file, which works. You know, it's not that big of a deal. You know, when I hit play, it still works. However, if you want to create a command that you can execute anywhere by just typing in the name of the file, that's not going to work. And you actually see here it says ZSH, which is the default shell in Mac, which is another reason why this shebang line is important. Pretty much what we need to do is we need to put this file in a location in our path. So you can say echo path in caps, and that's going to list a bunch of directories. The one we are interested in is USR or user local bin. So we can move our file intro to user local bin and then give it some name we'll just call it intro so for this we will need to prefix with sudo to have elevated permissions put in our password and now we should be able to just say the name of our file intro and it works however we can no longer edit it here. You see it says intro deleted. So if you want, you can go find that file and open it. However, for what we're doing, we don't really need a command that we can execute anywhere. That's just an explanation of why you have to prefix with the dot slash. You have to do it anytime that file is not found in any of the directories in our path. So what I did is I just recreated the file and this is in our local directory. So we're back to where we started. And again, with recreating the file, you might want to go back and edit the permissions to add the execute permission. There we go. Now, the last thing I want to show you in this video is how to execute your script by double clicking the file inside of a finder window. So this is pretty simple. Pretty much all you have to do is find the file. So I navigated to it and there's the file. Now, an easy way to do this is actually from Visual Studio Code, right clicking the file and then reveal in finder. That'll bring up this window with the path to this file. Now, it's most likely the case, you'll just be able to double click this and it works. And you can see my beautiful theme pop up. I hope you guys like it. Let me know what you think. Took many hours to design these colors. And you can see it has some extra information in here, but you do see the output of subscribe, which comes from right here. I'm convinced this is subliminal messaging and it's actually gonna work, so we'll see. Now, this might not be the case for some of you where you double click it and it just works. So there's pretty much a convention that if a file ends with dot command, it will open up in the terminal by default. In newer versions of Mac, it was made such that anything without a file extension would automatically open in the terminal, which is my preference for sure. But you can also right click, open with, select terminal or go to other, and then scrolling through all this junk, you can go into utilities and scrolling through here, you'll eventually find the terminal app. So that is another way you could open it. But for me, double clicking works fine. This is actually pretty handy if you just want to write a script that does something, you can just double click it, put it on your desktop, and then whenever you need it, it's super easy to run. Now there is a preference that you can change. So if you go to preferences, you can go to shell for your profile and then make it such that it closes the window once the shell exits. So what this will do is once the script is done, it just closes out of it, which you may or may not want. If you have user input, it'll wait for that user input and you can interact with the application. However, if you write some script to just automate something, you don't necessarily need it to open and then have you X out of it. So that might be something handy. However, for me, I'm gonna keep it so that the script stays open. So we'll switch that back to don't close the window. You can also do close if the shell exits cleanly, which might be handy if you only wanted to close if everything worked as expected. So that's an overview of different ways of running your program. Hopefully that was helpful. It was a decent introduction, but make sure you stay tuned for the next video where we're gonna start learning about some more programming concepts. I'm excited for that, so hopefully I'll see you there. Peace out.